How you doing today, fellas? Today we got a true GDM 26 one door swing door cooler. It's the one on the right here. Customer states that it isn't cooling anymore. Uh, first thing we notice when we get in is the lights are on and the fan is operational. You can hear the fan. I'll, I'll explain what's going on as we progress through this call. So the first thing we're going to do is pull it out and unplug it. You'll notice that I cannot pull the grill off and it's already heavily damaged. Those screws weren't even uh, screwed into that uh, condenser plate. So I'm pulling it out here and it's been worked on a few times. You can see there's a bullet valve on that uh, compressor stem and um, it's pretty dusty. So I'm gonna clean off that condenser coil of course. I do that in every single call even if there's not that much on there. So the next thing we're going to do after we pull it out is plug it in. And uh, I just want to see what's going on when I plug it in. And as you'll see, the condenser fan is going to go. Uh, that means that the compressor should be turned on as well. Just by the fact that the fan is going and the compressor is not going, leads me to believe that there is either something wrong with the compressor or the starting components. So that's where we are going to start. So first thing we're going to do is remove the components. Uh, I'm going to start with that clip that's holding that plastic piece on there makes life a little easier. Then I'm going to pull off that capacitor. Uh, you're going to want to short those comp those uh, terminals together and then pull them apart. It's important to uh, short those terminals together to discharge those microfarads or that voltage that's stored inside. I'm going to pull out my handy dandy multimeter and check what the microfarad reading is. Put it to MFD and Test the terminals. Looks like 158, which is within spec, which is 145 to 175, as I'll show here. There we are. So it's within spec. It's not the capacitor that's the issue. So I'm going to pull apart the uh, starting relay and also the uh, overload protector. Um, before I do that, I gotta remove that clip for the capacitor. Now here is where I kind of went out of order, and I decided to start testing the terminals on the compressor. Um, since the capacitor was okay, that's the starting relay that I'm holding, and that round thing is the overload protector. So I'm going to start with these terminals here, I'm going to pull off that overload and uh, what I'm going to do first is test the multimeter. I'm going to make sure that I have continuity uh, in between those two pins there. Anyways, after I test to make sure that's okay, I'm going to test each of these pins to ground. Um, if any of these pins have any continuity to ground whatsoever, you are going to have to um, discard this uh, compressor. It's a bad compressor and the uh, windings are shorting. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test these terminals. Uh, start to run, start to comp uh, common and common to run. Uh, they should each about add up. Um, the two, two smaller numbers should add up to the larger number for thereabouts. If it's if you get something like 2 uh, ohms, 12 ohms, and then something like 89 ohms or open line, then um, the uh, compressor is bad. Um, this one isn't perfect, but it, it, it's not horrible. So I'm going to keep progressing as I 
go through this call. I believe it was 12.2, 11, and 1.5 or something. Pretty close to perfect. So a good hint to remember is to either start with the two on top or the two on bottom. Um, it, it depends on the compressor, but you're always going to have uh, those two on top or, or on bottom, and those are going to be uh, your start to run. And uh, those are going to be your highest number. And then the other two numbers should add up to that number when you're testing for the album. So here I'm going to test the starting relay. What you're going to want to do is put the pins from your multimeter into where the starting relay connects to the compressor. It's going to be two holes basically. And you're looking for continuity on one orientation and no continuity on the other orientation. So you're going to want to flip that coil upside down when you're done testing it one direction. So if you have continuity on both sides or no continuity on both sides, that's a bad starting relay. So next thing you're going to want to do is shake it. You want to make sure that it can freely open and close. If you hear any sort of uh, anything in the way of it opening and closing inside, then uh, discard the starting relay and get a new one. So here is the culprit. It's uh, this is an overload protector, and as you can see, there's a small crack. And what that will do is it will prevent the compressor from starting. The um, the continuity will be broken. And uh, unfortunately, this is the last thing that I saw when I was working on this and could have saved me a whole lot of time if I would have seen this first but it's good to be able to eliminate every single variable and when uh, a single component in your starting relay uh, kit goes bad replace every single thing uh, you want to replace your capacitor and your relay eventually those will go bad as well and that's all we have for today um, even if I did not find this crack, I probably would have attempted to replace the starting components simply because the compressor seemed to have checked out okay. Um, and everything else seemed to be in fun you know, working order, functioning fine. The only variable to have considered is possibly that uh, refrigeration port that somebody had left on. Normally you don't want to leave a temporary uh, inlet like that because that's a point for a possible leak. However, I felt that this compressor had no issues and that a new set of starting components might have helped the problem. Uh, one of the clues that led me to believe it could possibly have been the starting components was the fact that the compressor would, ne would not even try to kick on. There was no noises. There was uh, simply no power getting to the compressor. And I knew there was no power issue, being that there was uh, power getting to the condenser fan. So, to me, that presents only the possibility of a bad compressor or a bad set of starting components. And before writing off the entire compressor and cooler, I figured I'd give starting components a try. And that's what I figured before I found this crack. And I'm glad I found the crack, since I was vindicated however even if i didn't i would have tried to have replaced those starting components before condemning the compressor and putting the whole cooler up for a replacement 